Hello and welcome to Negative Feedback. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Polaroid SX70. This camera takes Impossible's SX70 film, which is 160 ISO. Uh, it comes in black and white or colour, and we've got some of the black and white and colour to test out today, but first up's this one. got it when there was no cars, I think. One of the reasons why I think this camera is so cool is just because of the nature of... Like, look at it! It's awesome. It's, it comes as like this flat thing and folds out into an SLR, which is just really clever. This version is slightly different. The original came out in 1972, and this is the autofocus one, which is called the Sonar. It uses like a wave to bounce back to straight in front of it to time how long that took to tell you where to focus, which is actually really quick. It never hunts like a digital camera. It's <laughs> it's really quick. That's actually a huge benefit. You could give this camera to anyone, and they would be able to take a photo. I think my eyes are actually watering, but that's how cold it is. <laughs> Not the Arctic, George. Pull your socks up. When I was first given one of these cameras, I was a bit scared to touch it because it looks really confusing and delicate, but actually it's pretty easy to use. All you have to do is grab this indentation -y bit and pull. And that fully extends the camera. And then it's as simple as pressing this button and fully pressing it to take a picture. And then when you want it to collapse, all you have to do is push the arrow and it's, it's really as simple as that. On this particular version, you have a few more controls. Uh, there's the white and black dial, which is for exposure compensation, which you kind of have like third stops, I think. Um, it's a bit of a guesswork though, considering the camera is automatic. And then you also have the option to click this button and override to manual focus, which is great because it's sonar if you're trying to focus through a window, it focuses on the window, so you have to use that occasionally. The last thing there is to note is that to get the film in and out, you have to press this yellow button down here, but we've still got some film in there, so not right now. So we're having some technical difficulties. Um, it's actually so cold that the film isn't developing properly. <laughs> it's kind of just washing out into nothing and smush. So, I think we're gonna just have to show you some of my highlight reel. So here's some I made earlier. episode didn't go quite as planned. We were intending to go out and take a lot more photos and kind of give more of a live demonstration of how the camera works, but it was just so cold that not only the camera wasn't fully functioning, my hands and brain also were starting to fail me slightly. So we're going to end this up on the webcam instead and talk some of my thoughts and feelings of the camera. One thing I would say first of all is that I would prefer the non-sonar version. Uh, this camera is so good because of how travel safe it is, I guess. Travel portable. Portable, that's the one. How portable it is. If it didn't have this extra black bit on it, it would just fit in a few more bags. Um, and autofocus isn't something that I really feel like I need, although it is handy. 
Another thing that I consider a slight problem is that this camera is only f8 and you don't get to determine the shutter speed. So considering it's only 160 ISO film and it has to be f8, you quite often have to shoot at quite a low shutter speed and you won't be informed what the shutter speed will be before you take the picture. So you might end up with a blurry photo quite a lot of the time. So if you have shaky hands, maybe this isn't the camera for you. But Mint do make another version of this camera which has been kind of hacked to take 600 speed film and also adjust the shutter speed through a thing they call the time machine. So if you feel like splashing out a bit extra, I feel like that is definitely the way to go. It just seems to tick a few more boxes which make this camera really great. But it does have a tripod screw, so if you do struggle with that and you could be bothered with a tripod, maybe it is worth it. Other than that, I don't know if I have really anything else to say other than how cool this thing is. Um, I would recommend it. I think it's fun. You should try it if you can. Thank you and hopefully see you soon.